Hey guys, this is Nurse Shells and I am back with a much needed video. Um, this video is titled Dosage Calc Make Easy. We all know that as nurses we run into dosage calc everywhere from ATIT's exams, from HESI exams, from um, nursing school exams. Dosage calc is everywhere. Stay tuned if you want to see how to make dosage calc your B. No, just kidding. Stay tuned if you want to see how dosage calc is made easy. The provider order reads, infuse 250 milligrams of ampicillin diluted in 50 milliliters of normal saline over 20 minutes, okay? The nurse should set the pump at what milliliter per hour flow rate, all right? So what you want to do is, first of all, not panic, okay? I know it seems like a lot, but I'm going to show you how to make break it down, and breaking it down is what's going to make it easy for you, okay? All right, so first, let's highlight some key words, okay? Infuse, all right, um, 250 milliliters, okay? Because we see that our question is asking us, um, what should we set the flow rate at in milliliters per hour? So the only thing we really need to focus on is milliliters per hour, okay? So we come to our equation and we see that it's 50 milliliters um, over, 20 minutes that's all we kind of really need to focus on so really the 250 milligrams of ampicillin is just extra information so don't let it throw you off sometimes they will throw out um extra information and it'll kind of trick you up but you don't need that inside of your equation to come up with the correct answer okay we see that they're only asking us for milliliters per hour flow rate okay so all we really need to know is 50 milliliters over 20 minutes. Now I'm gonna show you the easy part of how to break it down. I'm gonna show you how to use dimensional analysis, which is very, very easy. So I recommend you do dimensional analysis while working these problems out because it really breaks it down and makes it a lot easier, okay? All right, so let's get started. We have, we're looking for milliliters per hour. Okay, so like I said, we already know that we have 50 milliliters over 20 minutes. All right, so they gave us minutes, but we need to know hours. So how many minutes is it in, an, in one hour? All right, we know that there's 60 minutes in one hour. All right, and then we would just work our problem out accordingly, okay? Because what we can do now is scratch out minutes because we don't need to know that. We were looking for milliliters per hour, so we're left with milliliters per hour. So really, we're left with our two um, equations or um, we're left with milliliters per hour and that's what they're asking us to know. So, at this point, we would just multiply across, all right? 50 times 60 over 20 gives us 3,000 which leaves us with 150 milliliters per hour, okay? Do you see how I did that? I'll go ahead and do a run through very quickly, all right? We see that they were asking us for milliliters per hour, okay? So I come here, I always start with what they're asking me for. So I set the equation up as milliliters over hours. So I just plugged in. They gave me 50 milliliters, I plugged my 50 milliliters in. They gave me 20 minutes, so I plugged in my 20 minutes, okay? I can't leave it as 20 minutes because they're not asking me for minutes, they're asking me for hours. Therefore, I have to um, convert minutes into hours in order to solve this equation correctly, all right? So I know that there's 60 minutes in one hour. So 
just to knock out the things that I don't need, I went ahead and crossed out minutes and minutes because those two can be crossed out because I no longer need them, which left me with what they were asking me for, which is milliliters over hours. I then came and multiplied across and did 50 times 60. So you see my 50 times 60 here. And then the 20 times one leaves me with one, okay? So I'll do that just in case you wanna see it visually, okay? Which 50 times 60 gives me 3,000. 20 times one gives me 20, which then leaves me with 150 milliliters per hour and 150 milliliters per hour is my answer. You put that on your nursing school exam and you just got that problem, correct? So our problem reads, an IV of 750 milliliters of D5W 0.9% sodium chloride solution is to be infused over 8 hours. The IV tubing has a drop factor of 10 drips per milliliter. Alright, what they want us to do is they want us to calculate the drips per minute flow rate. All right, I'm gonna show you guys a very, very easy way to do this, okay? We know that they want us to find drips per minute. So like I told you the first problem, we always set up the equation of what they're asking us for, all right? So I wanna set up, I wanna set up drips per minute, all right? And once I have that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to simply my marker work what I'm gonna do is just simply plug in okay so I have my drips per minute okay so I'm gonna go back into the equation and find out what the drip factor is set at all right I see that the IV tubing has a drip factor set at 10 drips per milliliter so I'm just gonna plug in my drip factor per milliliter all right so I know that there's 10 drips per one milliliter, okay? All right, so let's see what we're working with, okay? I know that they have given us 750 milliliters of D5W. So basically, I'm going to look here and see what I can use from the problem to eliminate milliliters because I don't need that. And at the end of the problem, I only want to be left with what the question is asking me for. So I know that I'm going to need to eliminate milliliters. So when I look into the equation, I see that there's 750 milliliters. So I can go ahead and plug that in. All right, so I have 750 milliliters over eight hours. All right, so like we saw in our first problem, I can't leave eight hours because I'm looking for minutes. So here I can go ahead and eliminate hours because I know that there is one hour in 60 minutes. All right. So now I can cross out hours because I no longer need that and I can cross out milliliters because I don't need them, which leaves me with what the equation is actually looking for, okay? Which is my drips per minute, okay? And at this point, I found what I'm looking for. All I'll simply do is multiply across. So if I'm multiplying across, I know that I need to do 10 drips times 750 milliliters, and I'm simply taking 10 times 750, which is going to give me 7,500, okay? And then I'm going to simply multiply 8 times 60. I'm just multiplying across eight times 60, and that is going to give me 480 minutes, okay? 
So I'm simply just going to bring this and wrap this around so you guys can see a little bit better here. So I'm going to be left with my 7,500 drips over 480 minutes. And then if I just simply divide, that's going to leave me with 15.6. But one of the things that we know about finding the answer to drips per minute is we always round up to the nearest drip. So if I have 15.6, I'm going to round this drip factor up to 16 drips per minute because we all know that there's no such thing as a half drip or we can't stop the drip factor mid drip. Okay, so just to recap on what we just did, I'm gonna walk you through it one more time, okay? So I always start off my equation um, with what the problem is asking me for. I see here that it's asking me to calculate the drips per minute flow rate, okay? So I have drips per minute, and what I did from that point is I just simply plug in, okay? So I'm gonna go back into my problem and see what they gave me for drips. I came back into my problem and I see that they have given me a drop factor of 10 drips per one milliliter. All right, so I plugged in 10 drips per one milliliter, okay? So at this point, I know that I need to go back up to my problem and find something uh, or find the milliliter amount that they are giving me because I'll need to cross those out, okay? And by crossing out, you just put milliliters at the bottom you come back up and you put milliliters at the top therefore you can cross those out all right so to cross out milliliters i simply came back into my equation saw that they gave me 750 milliliters over eight hours so therefore i'm going to plug that in at this point all right 750 milliliters over eight hours okay all right at this point i know that i can't leave eight hours there because the problem is asking me for minutes so i'll need to convert hours into minutes and you simply just come here you have your hours at the bottom bring your hours to the top so that you can cross those out I know that there's one hour and 60 minutes, okay? So at this point, you can cross out milliliters, you can cross out hours, you no longer need those, you have done away with those, and you're left with what the problem is asking you for, which is drips per minute. I'm left with 10 drips and uh, 60 minutes, okay? So at this point, I'm just going to multiply across, all right? So I have my 10 times 750, which leaves me with 7,500 drips. All right, now at the bottom, I'm going to multiply across, which leaves me with eight times 60, which will leave me with 480 minutes, okay? Now I'm gonna come down to the bottom so you can get a clearer picture and we can go ahead and finish this problem out. All right, so we are left with our 7,500 drips and our 480 minutes, all right? And at this point, you just divide the 7,500 over the 480 and you're left with 15.6 okay now we all know that when we're doing drips we have to round to the nearest drip okay so since i'm left with 15.6 drips i'll round that up to 16 drips per minute if this say would have been a been um would have been 15.1 i would have left it at 15 drips per minute but being that this number here is over five I'm going to go ahead and round up to 16 drips per minute. So this problem reads, a provider orders furosemide 40 milligrams IV daily. The pharmacy provides furosemide 10 milligrams per one milliliter. Calculate the amount of furosemide to draw up in the syringe, okay? So like all the other problems, I always set up my equation with what the problem is asking me for, all right? So the problem is asking me to calculate the amount of furosemide to draw up in the syringe, okay? And I know that they are asking me for milliliters, okay? So I'm going to set the equation up with milliliters, okay? Because I know that it, 
at the end of my equation this is the only thing that i want to be left with i should cross everything else out all right so at this point i'm simply going to plug in all right i'm going to go into my equation and see with what i have as far as milliliters go i know that the pharmacy provides furosemide 10 milligrams per one milliliter all right so i want to see what they're giving me milliliter wise okay so i see that they are giving me one milliliter per 10 milligrams so therefore i'm going to come down to my equation i'm going to plug in one milliliter per 10 milligrams okay so I know that I ultimately need to cross out and get rid of my milligrams because that is not what I'm looking for. So at this point, I'm going to look back into my equation and see what they're giving me milligram wise so that I can put it at the top and cross out. Okay. So I see that the provider is ordering for the patient to have 40 milligrams. Okay. So I'm going to come here, put 40 milligrams over one. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to cross out milligrams. I don't need it. I'm not trying to find milligrams. I'm looking for milliliters. So at this point, I've crossed out those and I'm left with milliliters. So I can go ahead and divide across or multiply across, excuse me. So at this point, I'm going to do one milliliter times 40, okay? Now I'm going to multiply across here and I have 10 times one. So I'm going to do 10 times one, which leaves me with 10, all right? So one times 40 is gonna leave me with 40 milliliters and 10 times one is going to leave me with 10, all right? So that ultimately leaves me with four milliliters, okay? So this is my answer. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do a run through of what I just did. They're asking me to calculate how many milliliters I will draw up into my syringe, okay, of furosemide. So I know they're asking me for milliliters, therefore I've come down and put milliliters because that is the only thing I wanna be left with. So I have milliliters and I come back into my equation and see what they're giving me. And I know that the pharmacy provides furosemide 10 milligrams per one milliliter. Therefore, I'll put one milliliter because I wanna line up my mLs and mLs. So I have my one mL over 10 milligrams, okay? Now I know I'll need to get rid of my milligrams, so I'm gonna go back into my equation and see what they are giving me milligram wise so that I can put at the top and cross out, okay? I see that the provider is ordering for that patient to have 40 milligrams of um, furosemide so i'll come and i'll put 40 milligrams over one okay and then at this point i'm done i can cross out milligrams because i have just eliminated those and now i'm only left with what the problem was actually asking me for so at this point i'm done i'll just cross uh, i'll just um, multiply across and then divide and then i'll be completely done all right so i have my one milliliter times 40 because i multiplied across and then I have my 10 milligrams times one, which you see here, and that leaves me with 10, and then I'll just divide 40, divided by 10, and that leaves me with four milliliters. Okay guys, so you just saw me work those problems. I got those problems out of my Dimensional Analysis Calculating Dosages Safely book, and it is the second edition from F.A. Davis. So I hope seeing me work those problems out really helped you guys out a lot. And I hope that it made dimensional analysis super easy. Until next time, live, laugh, and heal.